Welcome to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. I'm glad you're with us today. I'm glad to introduce you to one of the newest members of the California State Assembly. Her name is Cheryl Brown. She represents portions of the Inland Empire. Congratulations Thank on a you. tremendous victory. I think Thank one you. could say it's quite tremendous. Thank you. It what was, went right? It was exciting. What went right? People, I told the stories. Mm. I, um, I connected with the people and I am a part of that community. Literally. I have, I've been a part of that community for over 30 years mm. and um, people. So when you were running for office, yes. I know that you were walking. You went through three <laughs> pairs, pairs of, of shoes, shoes right. so there's no doubt you're walking. <laughs> what were the voters saying to you? What were their hopes, their dreams, their fears? In our, com in our community, sure. we are part of the Bible Belt. Right. And uh, in the Inland Empire, they told me their interest. They told me that they wanted um, small businesses because small businesses make up right. our community. Um, and when you start talking about jobs, two thirds of the jobs in the Inland Empire are provided by small businesses. So business people were talking about the regulations, but the employees were also talking about, hey, you have to help our businesses because they're paying our paycheck. Sure, so that begs the question because mm -hmm. you know as well as anyone, California is not known for being under-regulated, let's say. It, it, it's a state that has lots of regulations, and mm -hmm. at some level we like our oceans and our mountains mm -hmm. and our rivers and our forests, and so we do have more regulations, especially on the environmental side. But I think it's fair to say even Democrats believe that maybe we need to look at our regulatory environment and try to simplify a bit. I think that that's true, and it's not even so much the environmental laws and the environmental regulations, but just regulations, period. Right. I heard a lady the other day say, you know, I have a dirt, I have dirt in the front of my house because that's, that's the what regulation. I do. That's what, oh. but, but no, the regulation says that, no, you can't have dirt. You have mm -hmm. to have grass. Well, if she has grass, she has to spend more money on water. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many, there are so many regulations that we really need to look at that make sense. Here's what's interesting. Um, only Richard Nixon could make friends with China because a Democrat, if a Democrat made friends with China, that would have been being read. Uh -huh. Likewise, only the Democrats, arguably, can engage in regulatory reform because That's if the true. Republicans do it, you know, yeah. it's, it's cramming on the little guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So given that we have folks like yourself in the assembly that are looking towards regulatory mm -hmm. reform, we have a governor. A Democratic governor is looking towards regulatory reform. Will we really see regulatory reform? Well, I've only met one time <laughs> with the Get entire cracking. body. Get cracking. <laughs> one right. day. I understand. Which was the first day Fair that enough. we were sworn in. I, I hear you, but. And, um, we will be looking at, I mean, our, my office sure. will be looking at what we can do to make this a better environment mm. for business to make it so that small businesses can feel comfortable. And, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that one of the major cities in your district is San Bernardino. Yes, and we that's, know, yes. We're, we're ha we, own, we own half of San Bernardino yeah. is in our district. And that is... And that's part of downtown and that's where the bankruptcy is and right. that's where everything... I believe that um, we'll see what the judge says on Friday right. to see if we can work all of this out. San Bernardino but is aside, hurting. But aside mm -hmm. from judicial rulings, mm -hmm. the bottom line is San Bernardino, like you said, is, is suffering. Yes. I mean, a lot more than Riverside, for example, mm -hmm. Redlands, Fontana, whatever it is. I mean, amen, the Amazon distribution center has yes. come to the county. Yes. Or is it the city? No, well, it's come to the city, city. but it's, it's at Norton. Okay. It's going to be located Which at, at Norton Air Force Base. We know Space. that was the beginning so of that's San a Bernardino's joint powers, problems. Yeah, but that's a joint powers area. Right. And they've hired, um, they've hired over 1,000 people to date. And, um, Couldn't come at a better time. We really, but you, it's interesting because they hired them, but people came from all over the country. To interview Not for those county, jobs. Country. Not the, yeah, they came from wow. all, when when we were down um, when we we had an office on E Street sure. where they were where they were interviewing for that position for those positions. Right. And people had license plates from all over the country. What does that tell you? That tells you that we need jobs in our Desperately. country. Desperately. Desperately need jobs and we need jobs that people can fill. Not necessarily people that are so so highly educated. Right. But All what levels. about the middle class? What about people? Or, or the lower middle class or, or the Wherever. working poor? 
whoever it is. So we still need those. Well, we need jobs. But what can a Sacramento Assemblywoman do? I mean, I'm not trying to minimize. You know oh, that. No, no, no. But you know, what what can you do? Create an environment. That's the main thing I believe mm. we can do. Um, I look at Fontana, and mm. Fontana is the largest city now in our district. It's they, bigger than San Bernardino. Yes. What does that tell you yeah. about the sadness yeah. that has fall, befallen San so Bernardino? So I have to share San Bernardino with another mm. um, district another because member. it's cut right mm. in half. But Fontana says we're open for business. Josie Gonzalez, uh, that's we, her home base but supervisor. But Aquanetta right. Warren, the Aquanetta. mayor there, says, hey, Gotta we have got to do some work right. here. And I was in the office in, in um, Fontana just the other day, mm -hmm. and they were looking at some plans. Mm -hmm. they're, building a, they're building out an entire section of Fontana up near the 15. And what I understand mm -hmm. is you know, folks who had lived in San Bernardino are now moving to Fontana. Oh, they're yeah. moving to Redlands. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. The city, you know, which had been named an all-American city, I think, in 1977, mm -hmm. is a shell of its former self, and it, it's sad. It's sad, but I know Mayor Patrick Morris is working hard. Everybody's working right. hard on the issue, right? And everyone has their own way of looking at what the mm -hmm. solution is, and so what we have to do is have all of those people come together. Now, one and talk tool about that. that many cities used, including San Bernardino, that was effective. You know where I'm going mm -hmm. was redevelopment. Yes. And redevelopment was eliminated last year. Uh, California Supreme Court upheld mm -hmm. its elimination. But, you know, there are rumblings that maybe we can bring it back in some form I'm in 2013. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Democrats have two thirds of the Assembly and the Senate. Yes. The and governor's not a big fan of redevelopment, <laughs> right. but what do you think? And it doesn't have to be called redevelopment. That's true. What, what happened with redevelopment okay. was that so many people were misusing it up and down the state. But, but that's the thing. I mean, I'm going to push you. Were so many people or were there just poster children that well, were using it and they gave a bad name to some good people? Yeah, all I know yeah. is that what I've heard about it and what I've researched is that there were many people. There were abuses. And there were abuses. Yeah. And so the governor, in his infinite wisdom, thought that he should get rid of the whole program. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that um, when, when it went, when they, when they, when they um, sued, right. the gov when they sued the state right. for doing it, is when it all kind of went south. It fell apart. We right. thought there was a compromise right. that would have allowed cities right. to send money back right. to, to Sacramento, right. but keep some of it, and then the court held that was in violation and, of property. And all 22. of us are looking at, all of us are looking at what we can do to at least rectify maybe affordable housing that issue affordable housing is right. very important uh, some cities will tell you they have too much affordable housing so we have to <laughs> we have to also look at that so in our final moments how are you i mean <laughs> who would have thunk i mean did you ever dream you know this it, wasn't my dream it was it, it which really is wasn't not my dream right right but um but once once it became my dream right i have i have gone 24 hours right. just working at it, trying to make it be a very successful um, assembly, so, right. <laughs> uh, assembly uh, uh, member seat. And what's interesting yeah. is that you are in a new class which allows you to serve for 12 years. Yeah. Prior classes mm -hmm. over the last 15 years only mm -hmm. served six years, so right. you really have time right. to become an expert in whatever area right. you choose. Is that area going to be small business? Is it going to be education? It's going what to are your thoughts? Both. both. <laughs> it's going because what I found out from small business um, owners is that even if even if they could have all the jobs available, that they have a pool. Right. An that educated aren't workforce. Educated. Right. It's that simple. And that workforce that they need is not right there. So what they found is that many people. They'll 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 um, you know put a job there, and they'll have people from everywhere else come, just like the Amazon. Um, I have to admit to you, that. I'm totally mm -hmm. taken by you, completely <laughs> taken by Why? you, and I am I feel lucky that you are serving the people well, of the Inland Empire in Sacramento. Promise you'll come back. I I will, <laughs> and I am excited oh, about congratulations. What we're do. Her name is Cheryl Brown. She's a member of the California <laughs> State Assembly. I'm Brad Palmer. So we'll be right back on Charter California Edition.
Welcome to Charter California Edition. My name is Brad Palmer. It's our guest, Kevin Jeffries, the newest Riverside County Supervisor. We congratulate you, Thank you. on a wonderful victory, a close victory. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a moment. First, I want to look back. You just finished three terms in the California State Assembly, six years total. Of what, of what are you most proud? Oh, you know, I've been asked that a number of times, and, and I think just working to kind of run interference for a lot of folks in the district. It's tough to be in the minority party and get a lot of legislation through, mm -hmm. which is probably not a bad thing. Right, fair enough. But at least try to help businesses and individuals deal with state agencies when they're not moving fast enough. That, I really think, is where we were very successful. We got some legislation through, but, you know, it's tough One times. One bill that, that you're most proud of? Uh, I don't know that I have one. Fair bill. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. We had a number of bills that actually never got through, but actually resulted in achieving the same result, helping with Citrus State Park and Riverside. Right. Um, that was a big one. So, you know, there's there's some bills that uh, we, we did pretty good on. Are you melancholy? Um, you Given know. that the Democrats have two-thirds <laughs> supermajority in both Assembly and Senate? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no, that's the problem now. There's no checks and balances anymore, and that's unfortunate. I think government needs that no matter which party's in power. You need checks and balances. Well, let's talk about that because I think it's fair to say the Inland Empire jumped on the Democratic wave in yeah. November. Yeah. There were three contested races for Congress, for State Senate, and Assembly. Yeah. All three went to the Democrats right. in a bit of a surprise. Um, you actually were one of the few bright spots for the Republicans <laughs> in the Inland Empire. And, and, and we also can't forget Mary Bono Mack, who lost sure. East. Right, right. Um, you were running as a nonpartisan, so maybe right. that was to your benefit. But talk to us about that. W w what's going on in the Inland Empire? Well, um, Republicans, uh, they got off their game. And you had a, a different turnout model than what I think they were expecting. Um, the Hispanic community really turned out strong. Republicans had failed to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's just a number of things. You had a lot of new college students that had right. registered to vote. How they weren't on the radar either. How do you think Prop 30 played? Because we saw Governor Brown work the campuses diligently at the end. Oh, sure. We know Prop 30 passed with over 55% of the vote. Sure. I thought it would get 55% no. Yeah, no, so. the, it, Prop 30 is actually part of the, what was the bigger challenge with the overall election. It was bringing out a new base of voters, and, and in my particular case, it was college students. Uh, we found five to 6,000 additional uh, voters under the age of 30 who new registered to vote. And many of them registered online, yes. and when you look at those statistics, right. they were not registering as Republicans, right. I mean, under right. 20%. Right. Um, and a lot of campaigns were ignoring them. Right. So yeah. let's talk about your victory. You uh, took out, I'll say, an incumbent Bob Buster, fairly well liked, had been here many years. Um, I think it was his fifth term. Is that right? Yeah, he'd been there 20 years. 20 years. So, yeah. uh, so what happened there? I mean, you won in a squeaker, about 1,200 votes. What happened? Well, <laughs> uh, well, but uh, you know, it, without look, humility, I mean, yeah, why did right, it go right? Right, right. right. I mean, uh, you know, I think Bob had just reached a point where a lot of even his friends who supported him early on said, "Look, it's just time for change. Right. We need a new energy in there." We had folks who were disappointed that they couldn't get their phone calls returned mm -hmm. and what have you. I don't know that Bob ever knew that that was happening. Um, I, look, I've worked with Bob for 20 years, so of sort of course, a, sort of a love-hate relationship. Right. Um, but I think voters were just ready for some new blood to get in there and, and sort of fight for Riverside County right. and bringing back businesses and you know, small businesses and jobs. So let's talk about the future. You are now a member of the board, yeah. uh, five members. You're the junior member. Mr. Tavaloni was not successful in his run for Congress, so sure. you will continue to be sure, the junior sure. member. But what's interesting about boards of supervisors, I mean, you have over two million people in this county. Right, right. and. I guess I'll use the word a lot of power. I mean, people don't realize how much power counties have. Cities, not as much. Counties, you're the arm of the state. Sure, state money sure, flows through sure. counties. Federal money flows through counties. Right, right. So talk to me about that. Well, this is the part that's uh, getting you know a little challenging to get used to, where you actually can have influence <laughs> right. in how your local government runs. Right. And, and that part for me is, is, is nice, because now the areas that I've seen neglected I can start focusing on mm -hmm. the permitting process for small businesses to come in Riverside County that hit an absolute wall, taking up to five years to get their permits. Uh, we can start making those changes. So 
It's all about relationship with of the course. other supervisors. But you and know, I mean, Mr. Benoit, you served with. I've worked with, with them all. Yeah, I've worked um, with them all. Any others that were in Sacramento? I don't think no, so. No, no. But yeah, still, I John mean, you know a, them, of course. Yeah, I've worked with them for many years. But here's what's interesting. You are the county government, but how much do state regulations impact your oh, ability sure. to make the permitting process or yeah, regulatory process yeah. easier? Yeah, I mean, there's some things you can't touch. CEQA, you can't touch some mm -hmm. of those environments. But the process that you use internally, how long it takes to get from one desk to the next desk, um, you, you can make changes there. At the same time, I want to get a sense from you um, how you move forward when you think about the economic crises of the Inland Empire. I will admit that Riverside County has done better than San Bernardino County. Uh, sure. But I will admit that, and I admit that with some pride, I guess you could say, sure. although we love our friends in San Bernardino County. Um, but how do you continue to turn that corner? Well, Riverside County has to decide what it wants to be when it grows up. I mean, mm. we know... I like that metaphor because if you think about the Inland Empire, Orange County kind of grew up in the 90s, sure. you know, you now Riverside County is growing up. Yeah, it's, it's our turn right. and we need to stake out our identity and what we want to be. Do we want to be more warehouses or do we want to have light manufacturing, manufacturing, retail? Well, what is it that well, we what want? Do you, what, what, well, what's the vision? That's exactly it. That's, yeah. that's the vision that we need to, to articulate in Riverside County. I don't want any more warehouses. I mean, they're good paying Even, jobs. Yeah, I was going to say, no. But it's, it's time to expand beyond that. Look, we were trapped in uh, being a county of building homes, and that was right. it. Right, that didn't go well. We need to go beyond yeah. that. We, uh -huh. we need to reach out and say, we, we need to roll out the welcome mat and say, business is welcome in Riverside County. I must mention UCR Medical School. Sure. Uh, it is a source of pride for so many in this sure. county. Uh, Outgoing Chancellor Tim White, he is now leaving UCR sure. for the Cal State system, worked so hard to get this project off the ground. Uh, Dean Olds, Richard Olds, just put his heart and soul into it. The accreditation process failed last year but succeeded this year. Right. How important is UCR Medical to the overall economic future and health of this county? Oh, I, I think it's a, a very important component. It's not, it's oh, not course, everything. Right, of course, but, but what does it not do? Everything. I mean, in so many ways I see it, it really seems as if it should get this county, I mean, we have a dearth of, med, of doctors right. in this yeah, county. Yeah, and that's, and that's the challenge we have. We have to identify the industries where we are lacking in right. trained uh, individuals. To, and that goes back to the education, the need for business to link with the education community so that we deliver the right product coming out of the schools. UCR is part of that, is a very important part of it. Mm -hmm. We also have to look beyond that for those who are not looking to enter the medical field. Of course, field. I understand. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's a very important part, very important. So, you're just starting your first term. I know when someone enters Sacramento, they'll submit their first bill. It's kind sure, of Sure, sure. I don't think it works that way in the supervisor's uh, hall. No, How, it's, it's, it's What not. happens now? Do you uh, submit a... What do you do? Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've met and discussed that uh, with staff, um, county staff, to look right. at, you know, what's the process going to be, because it's entirely different, right. you know, than what I experienced as a water board member and, right. in Sacramento yeah, right. and all that. So we're, we're carefully doing it. We don't want to roll out our first proposal uh, right. and, and have it fumble. Of course. Or overlook but something. But think about so. it. You have to convince... I guess, what is it, two others? I yeah, mean, two others. There's sure. only five on the board, sure. not a hundred and whatever others. Yeah, I mean, it, it's much better. So do you have a sense of what your goals will be for your first six months in office? Uh, yeah, we do. I mean, the, the permitting... Care to tell us? Well, <laughs> I want to roll it out as, as it's ready to roll out. It, some of it will be transparency. Uh, related to uh, disclosing contributions when you get it. Right. You don't uh, want to turn it into San Bernardino County. Right, no right, doubt exactly, about that. exactly. Uh, some blackout periods so that uh, supervisors are not giving away taxpayer funds when there's an election being held. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as I mentioned, the permitting process. Um, we've got quite a few changes we want to make. Well, we congratulate you, Kevin Jeffries. I know you worked very, very hard on this election, and we're glad to see that you've come home. You don't have yes. to fly to Sacramento. Yes. His name is Kevin Jeffries. He is a member of the Board of Supervisors in Riverside County. My name is Brian Pomerantz. You are watching Charter, California Edition.
Welcome back to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. He is back. He is the dean of UCR's new medical school. He is victorious. His name is Dean Richard Olds. Congratulations again on accreditation. Thanks. What a huge <clears throat> victory. You told me something, and I want you to tell our viewers. How many medical schools have seen their accreditation turned down one year, and then they get it another year? Well, now exactly one, us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but prior to that, there had never been a medical school that had actually done that. So uh, obviously, that was a big hill to climb uh, last year. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do it without our community. Right. Basically, when we are turned down by the state, the only way to get the school open was to have basically everyone in the community step forward, and that's what we did. And when you say turned down by the state, the ultimate reason for the first denial was the state withdrew funds that they had promised to UCR Med. June 28th, the governor dropped us out of the budget. Yeah. So that was the that kiss was of problematic. death. Yeah. And so over the last year, you, along with Chancellor of UCR Tim White, sure. went on a massive fundraising campaign, yes, yes, we and did. it was successful. Uh, we raised $100 million, but most importantly, it was $10 million a year for 10 years. So it wasn't just the magnitude of the money. I see. People made 10-year commitments, it's and that's very important because ultimately we didn't have uh, as much money as many other starting med schools, but the fact that we had a 10-year commitment and so many people in the committee in the community participated right. uh, allowed us to get accredited with a smaller budget than most med schools. But what about the state? Because you still need a funding stream from the state of California. Uh, well, we're back knocking right. at their door. Uh, we current we have asked the state for 15 million dollars in ongoing support. Is that a lot? In the no. scheme of things? Well, I'll give you an example. Austin, Please. Texas is starting a brand new medical school right now. Right, okay. Uh, Austin, Texas uh, had a tax levy to raise $25 million a year forever, and they received another $25 million from their system. So they're going to be opening their new medical school with $50 million a year on an ongoing basis. Not fair. And the existing UC medical schools, existing schools, right. all get considerably more money than that in state money, and they have profitable operations because they've been in existence for decades. So good news or bad news, I'm not sure. We have two new members of the California State Legislature representing Riverside, Jose Medina and Richard Roth. Mm -hmm. Where are they in this calculation? Well, clearly that's good news for us because both of them actually ran on a platform of getting the School of Medicine funded. And when they were uh, sworn into office, they were allowed to submit one bill. They both submitted a bill to uh, provide $15 million in ongoing support. So that works. I, it's, hard, it's hard to have too much right. better support than that. And how does the passage of Prop 30 <clears throat> play in the calculation? Because Prop 30 sure. gave money to K-12, K-14, and the UC system, and the CSU system. Well, if Prop 30 had gone down, I think we, there's no way we get any money. There would be no way for the state to give us new money when right. they were simultaneously cutting everybody else. So I think it would be fair to say Prop 30's passage allowed for the possibility of us getting funded. Right. And now we just have to get over that next little hill to get that money. No, I think it's fair to say we are incredibly proud that Tim White has been uh, awarded the position as is it Chancellor of the Cal State System? Actually, or President, president. It's the reverse yeah, of the uh, President of the Cal State UC system. system. The sad part is, is he's leaving UC yeah. Riverside. How do you feel about that, sir? Well, you know, I found out that I was accredited, and right. you can imagine uh, uh, elation. Know, uh, the elation of that. And I, I learned that d on one day, and the very next day, Tim called me and said oh, he was taking this job. So, you rascal. Know, you know, up <laughs> and right. then, then crashing. But, uh, you know, what a fantastic of opportunity. Course. Uh, those those lucky people at Cal State no getting and it's the entire system. It is yeah, the, entire the entire system, system. but uh, you know uh, it would be difficult to replace a person who not only was a steadfast supporter of the med school, but is very knowledgeable about med schools. Right. He had been on a medical school faculty in Michigan, right. so you know hard to do better than a sure. fantastic boss. <laughs> now, yeah, clearly, so we'll see what happens with the new chancellor. Um, we are heading into the fall of 2013 which will be your first medical school class. So that means that you are accepting applications as we speak. Uh, How's absolutely. it going? Well, I know you don't know because technically deans can't be involved, but <laughs> generally speaking. Well, remember we had to start late. Because yes. of this process, most medical schools started uh, accepting applications in the summer. So we weren't accredited till October, so we got into it late. So mm -hmm. many students, you know, when they applied during the summer, we weren't in the national computer. This is a national process. Right. 
Uh, having said that, uh, we're going to take 50 students, 24 from our own campus, UCR. UCR undergrads. Undergrads, and 26 that can come from anywhere, and we already have over 2,000 applications. So How I don't... Is, is, that, is that a good number? That's a lot of applications. Is it more or less than you expected, given the late start, given the new campus? Uh, I was pleased with 2,000. Right. We could have, if, if it, we hadn't made it pretty clear that we wanted to recruit uh, uh, students from California right. and more and more importantly inland California right. we probably could have easily gotten five or six thousand out-of-state applications but I I think given our mission uh, not too Is many there should a apply. state residency requirement not a requirement but you know we are explicitly training doctors to stay in inland Southern California so what's the odds that I can get a, a student from New York to stay? Of course. Uh, in fact I would argue two equally qualified students one from San Francisco and one from Coachella you know, the student from San Francisco, I'm going to have a hard time getting them to stay even if they go to my med school. I have a fighting chance of getting the student from Coachella to stay. But here's the good news. Uh, many of the new medical schools, they haven't started residency programs. And you had, you've tutored me to know that where a doctor ultimately lands is either their hometown or where they finish their residency. Right, the residency. Not where they finish med school. Right. So if UCR didn't have a residency program, your chances were slim that they would come back to inland California, but you are starting or have started? Have already started. So yeah, it, it's not that we'd only be halfway there. About 40% of the decision is where you come from, equally divided between where you're born, where you went to high school, where you went to college, by the way. Okay, got it. And then about 40% of the decision is when you, where you finish your training. So uh, we're building graduate medical education programs. Those are the specialty residency training uh, opportunities uh, that, uh, and we already have a, an existing family medicine program at the county hospital. Uh, we started three years ago when I first came, a general surgery program between Kaiser and the county hospital. Just this year, we started a, a primary care general internal medicine residency between the county, Riverside Medical Clinic, Riverside Community Hospital, and Kaiser. And there are three more you're looking to start. And I will start a primary care pediatric residency, OB residency, and psychiatry residency in the next three years. Why those six areas of specialty? Those are the areas in greatest shortage. So I don't think you'll see us build a plastic surgery residency. Plenty of plastic surgery. There's probably plenty of them. Right. So it's very important not only to have residencies that have the shortest numbers, but the size of the residencies have to be comparable to the deficit. So the largest residency programs in numbers will be the primary care residencies because that's where we're so far behind. And you are not far behind in terms of facilities. Your UCR medical building is open. Yeah, so actually we got two. It's open. We got a brand new building open and we just refurbished another building and it's open just a couple weeks ago. And so we actually have the physical plants, by the way, all paid for. Those buildings are paid for. By whom? Uh, over the years, in the wisdom of the University of California Riverside, they basically put us into the master plan and just like the rest of the buildings, they were built with this medical school in mind. And they were also built knowing that we were in the 21st century, not in the 20th. And so there are, uh, they are filled with smart devices, smart technology. Explain that. Well, you know, the way we train doctors, <clears throat> uh, we do a lot of different things than when I went to med school. And we've chosen to retain a few things mm. uh, that, uh, that other med schools may not choose to. So on the new end, uh, we uh, use simulation, if you will, uh, high technology. We actually have electronic mannequins. They're quite expensive, about 300000 each. It's worth it. Uh, but just like an airline pilot will take off and land a plane thousands of times before they actually get in a real plane in simulators, we actually have these uh, electronic uh, uh, simulators, uh, patient simulators, so that both our students and actually groups of professionals, nursing students, pharmacy students, can actually be in critical medical situations and practice what they do before they ever see a real live patient. We also have a, another wonderful, I think, innovation in education. We actually have professional patients, often actors or retired uh, physicians, who pretend to be patients. And the, and the students come in and take a history and physical. It's all recorded on tape. And then the, the students are graded by their patients. What a wonderful idea from the very beginning. I have to say, I have rarely <laughs> met an academic who is as passionate in the, about their job as you are. And I know UCR Medical School is just the better for it. I am so excited for you. I congratulate you. I can't wait to meet the 50 students that will be joining you in fall of 2013. His name is Richard Old. He is the Dean of UCR's Medical School. I'm Brad Palmer. Thank you so much for watching Charter California Edition.